All right, we are continuing our failure analysis on the 200 HPDI uh, that we're remanufacturing. It's very important to figure out why it failed. So, um, thing we the standard with our fee of remanufacturing is we change your fuel water separator and at the same time we make sure there's no water in the fuel water separator. This is removed from the boat, obviously spun off. And this is also a good idea to do every year when you do your routine maintenance and you just pour it in the here. And if there's water, the water will go to the bottom. That's why fuel separators work. Additionally, if you see black particulate in it, you know your fuel lines are falling apart on the, from the inside out. It's time to change those. Sometimes it takes a little time to separate. That's a pretty funky color. That's why I got a lot of stabilizer in it, which is okay. But we're probably gonna tell the customer, might be a good idea to drain your tank. We also removed the uh, oil tank for the oil injection for this two-stroke outboard. Interesting thing about water gets in these very much more rarely than it gets into the fuel tank. But when water gets in an oil tank, it destroys the motor immediately. And remember, we're working with a motor that needs to be remanufactured, so we're gonna find out why it failed because they don't generally wear out, like never. So what can happen when the water gets in the uh, tank? Water's lighter than oil, it goes to the bottom, or heavier than oil, it goes to the bottom. And the interesting thing about plastic, the oil bonds to the, uh, the, the plastic. So there's gonna be water in there, there'll be no line, even though this is translucent. You won't see the water. This one looks fine. We elected to drain this one by just, this is the absolute bottom hose. This is the ultimate feed hose. We also change this filter. This filter gets clogged a lot. So we're gonna change that as well. But we'll just drain that out. See, it's pure oil. So we're pretty confident because any water would be at the very, very bottom. And you sure that's pure oil. So we're in good shape there. So another thing we always do when we remanufacture a power head, and anybody should do this, that this is settling out. Sometimes the water takes a little time to settle out, and you can see there's a little bit of water in the bottom of that. That's kind of an acceptable amount. So when we did the water pump, we found melted housing. And that right there is where the water is fed to the power head, and that's what cools the engine. So this, in our opinion, had been run without water. It melts the plastic, causes that. And usually, the, water, the impeller is shot when we do that, but the impeller was in good shape. So at that point, we called the customer and said, was an impeller put in there recently? And he indicated he thought there was, he was trying to remember. So what happened is somebody, just bought an impeller, didn't buy the whole kit with the uh, housing, which is always the best way to go. And it's not much more. The impellers are very expensive, so get a whole kit. It's always the best policy. Then they put the new impeller in it, still ran hot, took out the power head. So we're pretty confident that's the reason. We'll know more when we run it some more. It's just probably gonna be running tomorrow in our test tank because it's really cold outside. We've got one more test to do coming up on part three. That's a fuel re restriction test of the boat. Because even if you found one problem, you keep looking because you can obviously have multiple problems. You can prevent a future problem and you can create a happy boater after that. 